Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Shaping Africa podcast. Um, on this episode, I'm so excited to have Coach Roseanne Kamau with us. Um, coach Roseanne is the founder of Treasure Fitness and a certified nutrition coach with a background in psychology. Um, she helps busy women and moms lose fat so that they can become more healthy for themselves and their families. Um, she's also responsible for a number of celebrity transformations here in Kenya. Um, just to name a few, this is S or Sharon Mundia, um, Rugi Muni, Nana Gishaga, amongst many other women who've been coached by Roseanne to become their best selves from a health and nutrition perspective. So I'm so glad to have you on the show, Roseanne. Thank you so much for being here. No, thank you so much, Rose, for having me. It's such an honor. Yeah. It is such a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. And oh man, yes, that's what we're doing. <laughs> trying, to, trying to change women without dieting. Yes. That is the biggest thing. But thanks for having me. Yes. Thank you so much, Rose, for having me. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. And as you know, mm. this season, um, we are focusing on people who made their return from diaspora mm. um, back into Kenya yes. and the continent more broadly. And that's where I wanted our conversation to begin, because yes. um, I think your story is really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have an interesting story. I actually think I have the most boring life story, but we'll see how this takes shape. Yeah, we'll takes yeah. Shape. So, um, so tell me kind of what your life was like in the U.S. before you transitioned. So really, so I moved to the U.S. when I was 17 years old, okay. um, moved to go to college. Mm -hmm. Um, went to college, um, but within the first year of moving to the U.S., actually my mom died. Mm -hmm. um, so my mom died, and when she died, I actually took a year off because I said I wanted to take care of my younger kids, my younger sisters, my dad. They had been in a car accident, mm -hmm. and so I took a year off. Now, when I took a year off, this is going to be so interesting. Um, so I, was, I had a friend that I was talking to at that time. Okay. And this friend, uh, his name is Kamau. Mm -hmm. And that time, so we were in college, right? So he asks me, so you've taken the year off. Um, so he tells me, grab a pen and a paper. And because you, 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 know, you know how he is, right? Yeah. Uh, grab a pen and paper. Can you let me know? So last year, because that time I was actually working and going to school mm -hmm. before my mom even passed away. But then she was supporting our education. But I was working, going to school. So I take a year off after she dies to work and support my, my dad and my younger kids. That's, you know, just a, a extra support. So he says, he asks me, so how much money did you make the last year when you were in school? and working and then he says okay so i wrote that number down then he says okay how about the last year that you did not go to school but you're still working and what i found was i actually made the same amount of money mm. but the difference was i skipped a whole year of school. school and so it actually just showed me that i wasn't it wasn't serving me well mm -hmm. to not go to school correct so i decided to go back to school and join back um get back to school and continue to work and so i was able to do both things so anyway so we do that and that actually happens to be my husband right right <laughs> so we actually just started dating um first we were friends then whatever mm -hmm. so we uh, i went to school finished school and after I finished school, initially I was doing the regular jobs that everybody does when you go there. I started working in a nursing home, mm -hmm. taking care of older people. Mm -hmm. I hated it. I didn't like it. I hated waking up in the morning. I'm not a morning person. It didn't jive with me, but mm -hmm. I had to do what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did. But that supported me and it really helped me because it showed me that uh, you needed to work, number one. And number two, you needed to um, create and put... Uh, um, Create systems for yourself specifically when it comes to how do you earn money? How do you um, support? How do you pay your sure. bills? How are you still going to school? So that actually helped me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then after graduating, um, I then continued to work um, still in America. Uh, but I started growing up the ranks. Now, I did my background was in psychology. So I started I working, um, continued to work still almost in the same field, Correct. but people with mental disabilities. But now I did the administrative part of it. And so I started growing within the company. And so I grew in the company and I became a regional director. Now, at this point, I'm already married. So I'm working. I'm, I'm, I'm loving my job. I'm loving what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And at that point, now we have our first daughter. Um, now, daycare is expensive. It's ridiculously expensive in the States. So for us, we go back. So my husband is, an, is those who don't know, he's, he, he's a math guy. So he's, a, he's, he's in accounting. So we, we just went back to what we know. Look at the numbers. Do they make sense? So we looked at how much money we were bringing in, how much money daycare was going to cost. We just did the pros and cons. And for us, it didn't make sense to put all this money into daycare. Now we have two kids. It just didn't make sense. So mm -hmm. I ended up being a stay-at-home mom. I see. So it made sense. You know, my husband could work and could support us. Mm -hmm. So I stayed at home. 
Uh, and in this whole process of staying at home, we then started a coffee business, right? So uh, that's actually where the entrepreneurial bug hit me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we started a coffee business and we would import coffee from Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually started importing coffee from um, my husband's dad's farm so my father-in-law's farm mm -hmm. so we'd import coffee from nairobi mm -hmm. it would come all the way to new york we would get it brought into mm -hmm. boston because we lived in boston and we'd literally roast our own coffee package our own coffee and sell it Amazing. and we started doing that and we were able to get into like supermarkets we got into different mm -hmm. universities mm -hmm. the biggest account we had was at whole Foods. so i was super super excited that we were able to get in there yeah. um and then at some point um we then ended up selling that company okay. and then I started. Now at that point it was, what are you going to do? Are you going to um, continue? What are you going to do? You're going to go back to corporate, your old job or what do you want to do? At that point I wasn't sure. It's a bit of a crossroads. It was a crossroads. I also gained a ton of weight at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and so I worked on myself. I lost a ton of weight. Uh, and then um, everybody would be asking me, what did you do? What did you do? And so literally for years for like two whole years i just be people would come home i love entertaining my husband and i will love entertaining so they'd come home and i'd just be telling them what i did and everyone be, so my husband would be like oh shika you're you're ruining the party because all you're doing is talking about about your weight i'm like i'm not they're asking me questions and i gotta answer yeah, them and, and i love talking about right, it and i love talking about it right 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 and so eventually i actually then decided mm -hmm. to start um a, a coaching company a nutrition and fitness company um, where I now coach women and literally that's what I've been doing over the last 10 years. Oh, wow. So that has been the journey. Okay. And then in about 2015, actually this is, I think is going to be interesting because how did you move back to Kenya? Mm -hmm. So in about 2015, 2014, 2015, about that time, so my husband was, uh, was, was approached by somebody on LinkedIn. And uh, before even he was approached, we were having this conversation because I was, I was banging on Facebook with my business. I'm like, yeah, Facebook works. It's good for getting clients, blah, blah, blah. And I remember just saying, does anybody do anything on LinkedIn? Does it even work? Literally, I kid you not, like within a week of having that conversation, uh, somebody writes to my husband and says, oh, we're doing this whole thing in Nairobi, Kenya, da, 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 da. Would you be interested? So now the interesting thing is, because it would be nice for him to share his story. Mm -hmm. Mine is different. <laughs> um, at this whole point, uh, my company, my business has grown. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually looking for a bigger location for, to, to, for my fitness. So I'm looking for a bigger location where women can continue to come because I had a gym okay. and nutrition. So I had a space. So I was looking for a different, bigger location. But at this moment, as I'm looking for a space, uh, my husband is considering maybe moving to Nairobi. And he says, you know, don't stop doing what you're doing because it's not like we've accepted anything. So as he's thinking about uh, whether he's going to move back to Nairobi, uh, can, whether he's going to take this opportunity, I'm also moving with my business, right? So I'm looking and I find a space and I literally, the steps are as I find a space, he also decides, I think we need to really, really discuss about moving to Kenya. And you're like... Interesting like, timing. Right, 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 right. It really was, honestly, was like a proper crossroads. Mm -hmm. Proper, because I, I had such a good team of ladies I was working mm -hmm. with. Um, I loved what I was doing. And for me, it was like, are you kidding me? Am I going to start all the way from scratch? You know, I'd been out of the country for over 20 years. So I'm lit. And I remember I left when I was 17. So I was a teenager and I was under my mom's roof. And it's like I finished high school and went there immediately. So we'd grad we finished school in December. Correct. Like uh, KCSE, right? Correct. I moved in June, so I didn't even have enough time to tarmac. You know how a lot of people tarmac. My parents are like, no. I had CG. a similar story. Right? I left in August. Right. I was gone. Yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. So my mom put me, "Sugi, you gotta do typing. I gotta do French Driving. classes." <laughs> but then that time there was also, I know there's a lot of young people, um, MS DOS. I did <laughs> that too. <laughs> trauma <laughs> ms dos that yeah. is like a coding yeah i, I mean was, like i said well i think sorry. we had graduated to microsoft packages is that what it is yes that's from dos was. we went to yes, packages so yes. i did package you did pack okay i did dos <laughs> okay so i'm probably a little bit older than you yeah. so i did ms ms dos and i just remember thinking my goodness i cannot hack this my mom wants me to do ms dos i don't know what the heck this is and true because that's not something i love i don't mm -hmm. like coding i i hate it i totally hate it so anyway where was i because i was going to connect someone I was going to connect this somewhere. Uh, totally where were we? Train of <laughs> <laughs> I totally lost my train of thought. So you have you only left you left when you were seventeen, and now you're like at a crossroads where you're. Oh no no! I gotta start from scratch. Yes 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 yes. Yeah. So yeah. for me, I'm a Christian and I'm a yes. true believer in, in in Christ, and so I was I I took that weekend to pray. I mm -hmm. literally nobody was home. Kids stay with go stay with my my girlfriend. Mm. I took a weekend in prayer because I really needed God to tell me, "Do you really want me want us to move?" 
we'd already written our pros and cons. Mm-hmm. And the pros seemed like we need to move to Kenya. I loved Kenya. I actually wanted to move to Kenya earlier mm-hmm. when the kids were younger. But now they were so much grown. I had done all the heavy lifting work. I was like, why am I even moving to Kenya? I've already done all the heavy work. You know, because you know in the States you have no help. Sure. You do everything for mm-hmm. yourself, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I've already done the work. I don't mm-hmm. need to move to Kenya. But anyway, so this crossroads, I pray, and I just feel at peace. You'll be okay So to move back to Kenya. And so 2015, we packed our bags and we moved to Kenya. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and here we are. Wow. And what was the transition like, particularly for you and your husband and your daughters who yes. are a little bit older, having to reintegrate? Yes. So when we moved... Our older daughter was in sixth grade or standard six, mm-hmm. and the young one was in fourth grade. Okay. So it was harder on the older one because she'd already formed friendships. Mm-hmm. I was actually more worried for the kids than I was for myself. I was like, I'll be fine. I know I'll be okay. Um, the younger one, it was much easier to transition. Um, and so it took a lot of me being, by the way, super present, present in school. I was a room mom, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was very present um, volunteering in school because I wanted the kids, number one, to know that I'm around. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, to also get to understand the different moms, the sure. different, how the school works, sure. how the whatever works. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I volunteered a lot of time the first year. Mm-hmm. And as I was also doing that in terms of my transition, I also purposed to do a lot of networking. Mm-hmm. That was, ext- actually, that was the word for the year. I always have a theme and a word for the year. That was my word, network. Because I needed to understand who do I need to meet, who, who, who's in, I needed to know how does Kenya work, how, does, how do things run around here. And so that transition was, how would I say it, transitions are never easy, mm-hmm. but I think when you come with an intention mm-hmm. and psychologically you're prepared yes. to go over the hurdles, because everyone's like, well, the culture is different. Like, it is different. Cultures are different everywhere. Mm-hmm. But it's how you adapt and how you shift, you shift and how you change. True. Um, and so that's what I did. So just working on networking with different people, mm-hmm. being very present in the kids' school, mm-hmm. um, helping them transition um, that way. Um, that for me was the most, that would be, I would say would be the best thing that I did. And what I did for networking, I reached out to my networks and I'd tell them, if they knew of course who I was, I'm like, can you connect me? Literally, in that granular level. Yes. Like I'd write to you, hey Rose, it's Roseanne, you know I moved yes. back to Kenya and I'm looking to network, meet with different people. Mm-hmm. Who can you connect me with? Then I have like a, one of our dear friends, his name is Andrew Tieno. Uh, he works for Coca-Cola. He was actually a, a, one of our bridesmaids. They're really good friends with my husband. Okay. Yes, I wrote to him and I'm like, Andrew, can you connect me to different people? He literally connected me to um, a network, a business networking group he's a part of. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so what I would do is I would go for those meetings then meet with different people. Then once you connect with a different person, let them know who you are, connect me, connect. That's what I did, girl. Wow. That's what I did. I, I've always loved your hustle. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> girl, I, you, know, when we, you know, we talked a little bit earlier. Yeah. I was like, and yeah, well, that is the hustle. You know, because everyone talks about the hustle. Yes. Like, I guess I did hustle you a little did. bit. A little you bit. did. You yeah, did. Yeah, 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 so give yourself a pat on the All back. Right, I yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and at this point when you're networking, mm-hmm. are you trying to continue Treasure Fitness or are you just trying to meet people to kind of figure out what you want to do next? Mm, that's such a good question. Yeah. So initially it was for me to just understand the layer of the ground. Oh. I wanted to understand how, literally mm-hmm. how things run. Because mm-hmm. you have to understand something. Every market is different. Every, even cultures are different. So, you know, my background is psychology. So yes. I know human beings. I know how to, I, I understand that all humans are different. I understand we come from different cultures. And so with that understanding, I also know that even dealing with different people is different. So one of the things everyone had said, you know, the culture, the, the way Kenya works is different from the States. And it is different. It is very different. But I needed to understand what that looks like, what that means. Mm-hmm. Kenya is a networking country. That was the other thing I'd heard. Absolutely. It's important for you to meet people, know people. It's yes. about networking. Yes. And that just somehow stuck somewhere, you know, mm-hmm. in my head. Mm-hmm. I'm a relationships mm-hmm. kind of girl also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it, it's important for me also to make meaningful connections. So I'm just not networking to network. Yes. I'm networking to make meaningful connections. Uh, true, yeah. true, true. Yeah, true. I feel like there's a, I was going to answer something. You answered it. I did. Yeah. Okay. okay. Maybe I had an answer in the back of my head and it just never flew. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, and so, okay, so you, you're networking yeah. and then now you start building treasure fitness. That's where I was going. I, yes. I knew I forgot okay. something. I knew I forgot something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I start building the treasure fitness. Mm-hmm. When I actually started it um, with a couple of women, actually, the first year, mm-hmm. I started our community where we were living because okay. we were, yeah, well, the community where we are living. I started there and I talked to the chairman and I was so scared. I'm like, and by the way, this is the other thing. Even though I'm hustling, I was so afraid. 
Like I was afraid. It doesn't show up. Eh? Eh, no, it never shows. <laughs> but I was honestly like super mm. like, come on, we need to talk to the chairman of this community. I don't know if they're going to allow me. I don't know if they're going to brush me off. But I just did it. So I wrote to the chairman and I was like, okay, this is what I do. I introduce myself. I help uh, people lose fat without dieting. Would you, would you allow me? I don't know what platforms that you have. And he was such a good guy. Hard Rock community. They're such a great community. And so the, uh, the chairman wrote back to me. His name is ja Kagia. He wrote back to me and he's like, yep. You can come in. We have another meeting. So do you want? Let us know what you're going to be doing. And they actually allowed me. So I literally started coaching women there with a couple of men. Um, and then concurrently, I would also coach at the kids' school. So I'd be coaching in the morning at the kids' school. I'd coach in the afternoon at the kids' school. In the evening, I would coach um, the men. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, uh, the community. Mm -hmm. So at least mm -hmm. I had that happening and I had that going as I was continuing my networking. Exactly. So I almost had... Um, it's almost like a schedule, mm -hmm. you know, okay, I have these clients here, here, and here. Mm -hmm. So the first year, that's actually, that's all I did. Mm -hmm. That's all I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I know you talked about being a woman of faith. There's a sermon by Sarah Jiggs Roberts mm -hmm. where she talks about um, starting over is different from starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. I know, it's a whole sermon. I would love to listen to yeah, that. Yeah, I'll yes. share it with you. Yes. Um, but for me, your treasure fitness journey, because you had already had a foundation yes. in the U.S., it feels, even though there was a lot of hustle involved mm -hmm. and hard work, it feels like you kind of leveraged your U.S. experience to then like kind of start over in Kenya, but with the wisdom and the knowledge and the, you know. True. Yeah. That's actually what I did. It's yeah. not starting over. I, I love the way yeah. you, uh, you yeah. put it's that. It's not starting from scratch. It wasn't it's, starting from scratch. It's basically kind of starting over, but right. with the lessons from. Exactly, from yeah. what I'd learned. Yeah. And even testing the market. Mm -hmm. Because I also realized, by the way, I had two different markets right because uh -huh. i was there's a market i was leading with a lot of uh, experts and i was dealing with uh, a kenyan so even within that i was doing my own studies to notice how do people respond to fitness to nutrition Absolutely. it was completely different so it was a learning experience yes. for me and for me i loved that because i really got to understand how to deal with all these different cultures yes. And it helped me even just become a better coach. It helped me become a better, mm -hmm. um, yeah, a better coach, really. Mm -hmm. It really mm -hmm. did. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so were there any ups and downs oh, with money. building Please. treasure? Fit are you kidding me? <laughs> are you, like, I mean, do you, man, there are, where do I even start? Right. Man, let me tell you, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, and yes, and mm -hmm. yes, and yes. And actually, 2018 was really difficult. A little earlier 2018 so at this point so 2015 what i was doing is i was carrying all my stuff my, my 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 equipment putting them in the car driving them to school coaching the morning class removing them going back in the evening and it just became very tedious so i've actually moved closer to school with the with the effect or with the thought the thinking that okay those clients could come because I, I got a bigger house bigger whatever mm. they could come over hmm See me, I have this plan. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have it all laid out. I'm thinking this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Guess what happens? what happens? All my clients, I lost over 90% of my really? clients. Yes. But, so that was extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. And I remember going back to God and be like, uh -uh, mm -mm, this is not what you told me. Mm -hmm. uh -uh, this, I know this is not how it works, mm -hmm. but it is how it works, just so you know. Anybody who's out there and you're going through a hard time and God has talked to you, that is actually how it works. Mm -hmm. It was so difficult that year. Oof, it was really, really, really hard because mm -hmm. I lost a ton of income. I lost a ton of clients. And with that, it was like, okay, what am I going to do? Do I go back to the States or do I stay here? Going back was not an option. Mm -hmm. I, I just didn't, because I, I looked at the kids and I thought, you know, they're settled here. Yes. It was hard, Rose, mm -hmm. really hard. But in that moment, I actually, in 2018, someone told me, because I used to coach online clients also in the States, but I was introduced to someone who coaches, who teaches you how to leverage online. I see. Right? So, I mean, I, I looked at this and I thought, oh, this is quite interesting. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. Let me check it out. Mm -hmm. So I checked this out and I was like, let me jump in. Now, when I say God knows what he's doing, he really does. Mm -hmm. Because in 2019, I am learning, I am understanding how do you work on online? How do you leverage online? How do you do all yeah, that? The timing. The timing, right? Can you see how hard it was? But I'm telling you, you know, wow. even I feel like I want to cry. Yeah. When it says, you, you, what do they say? I, I'm, I'm not good. You know, I'm not good. With, you know how people come up with two phrases and they just throw, Suji, your comeback is your, your setback is your action. That's the, that's the one. That's it. 
<laughs> your setback is your, your comeback. comeback. Right. That, your setback. That was a real setback. But what I didn't realize then, then what I didn't realize, God was putting me and placing me. Because in 2018, 2019, I started with a whole online coaching people. Mm -hmm. So I'm coaching clients in Kenya, coaching clients in the States. I'm coaching, the, I'm sticking with that network. Mm -hmm. Then 2020 happens. happens. But guess what? I felt like I'd been prepared because yeah. that's all I was doing the your, whole of 2019. It had transitioned. It had yeah. transitioned. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. And so 2020 comes yes. and it was insane. Yes. It was absolutely insane. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, one interesting thing about you actually mm. is that I noticed mm. that you still have family in the US. I do. And that's a common thread <laughs> between us. Okay. Um, you know, how do you kind of stay connected or like kind of give perspective for someone who yeah. is thinking of moving back, but their immediate family is in the U.S. Yeah. And it can kind of create a bit of tension. No kidding. The decision. <laughs> Are yeah. you kidding? It did. And honestly, yeah. that was one of the things that when we're looking at our pros and cons, I mean, we even talked about family. We did pros and cons for family. You know, um, that was the hardest mm. because all my family is there. Mm -hmm. Mine, mm -hmm. all of it. Mm -hmm. My husband, half and half. Half are there, half are here. Mm -hmm. And it was just a decision we had to make for ourselves. Right. The good thing, the compromise was, we're lucky because we, we can't travel. Yes. You know, we can't travel. Mm -hmm. So when it's not like you can come and not and you, you're stuck. Um, and so for us, the compromise was okay. We'll try and travel at least every year. Yes. And so that has helped. Okay. We're tired though. We're like, we need them to start coming now. <laughs> But we want them to all come together because yes. usually we travel either around Christmas time when everybody's there mm -hmm. so we can get to meet everyone mm -hmm. at once. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, after this season, we, are, we literally looked at it like, are you tired? I'm like, yeah, I'm tired. You know, I wish they can also start coming but all come together. But you know how families are. Yes. Everyone has their own things that they're doing. But exactly. yeah, so we, that was the compromise that we, we came up with. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's a good compromise. Right? And um yeah, as long as you're intentional about like you know video chat time and things like that and also that and we do yeah. a lot of zoom by the way yes. zoom phone, zoom family phone yes. calls actually that one let me tell you that is actually the one that we found to be the best because mm -hmm. we always set up a time i've noticed when my husband he'll set up a time with his family mm -hmm. i'll do mine with my family mm -hmm. when are we meeting up and we'll do the zoom calls yes. and then we're all gonna chat up awesome yeah, yeah. awesome um and what if you just reflect on raising your daughters mm. in Kenya, um, you know, what comes up for you, like, versus maybe having to have continued raising them in the, the U.S.? States, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm so glad we moved to Kenya. Mm. They love it. Mm -hmm. Even they say they will love, they, they are, there's something about just being with your people. Yeah. They, I, 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 that's the only way I can say it. These are my peeps, you know right. what I mean? I'm in my home. Yes. I'm with my people. Mm -hmm. I, I'm traveling the country, mm -hmm. which is absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. The girls love it. And because they're, it, I think that's, gener is it gener Generation Z? Mm -hmm. I believe I so, think yes. that's them. Mm -hmm. I think it's them. Um, there's something about them and being intentional with your culture. I mean, they ask us questions about our grandparents. Um, which especially one of our daughters is very intentional in knowing mm -hmm. where her heritage mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. you know. So we that is if there's anything, the fact that they're here and they love the they love Kenya, yes. they love the people, they yes. love the culture. Yes. That for me over anything else. Actually yeah. they're like once they go to college, they wanna come back here and work here. Yes. 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 Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think at least one of them has yeah. said that our older one, oh, our wow. older one. Yeah. Very interesting. Mm. I, I think people I mean, I think if you've grown up here your whole life, you yeah. kind of underestimate the value of Ooh. knowing your heritage Ooh. until you live in the U.S. and see the effects of not knowing know your, your heritage. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I think it, it might sound small, like, oh, they know their story and where yeah. they're from. But when you really understand, you know, the American context and the African-American story. Yes. Yeah, you really value yes. your, your, your grandparents. You want to understand who they were. Yes. Where did you come from? Mm -hmm. Like, tell me more. Mm -hmm. like, well, man, let me not even talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, you know, I was thinking about you mm. and your whole journey with Treasure Fitness. Mm. And I thought, wow, what a timely way to serve the world mm. right because mm. i think if even like 20 years back you know lifestyle and chronic diseases were not a thing in kenya right um but then you know, or if they were or if they were no one was talking too much exactly about yeah. Yeah. um but now it's you know with covid everything health related is at the forefront Correct. 
Um, and I'm just curious, you know, how you see yourself <laughs> continuing to contribute um, and kind of shift people's mindsets yes. around health and nutrition. Right. Yeah. If my pillars are, they have three pillars that I coach, mm -hmm. mindset, mm -hmm. nutrition, and fitness. Okay. Those are the three pillars or movement, actually. I call it movement. I shifted from fitness to movement. Okay. Um, again, based on all the research. Mm -hmm. That research I was doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> But what is my goal? Honestly, when I think about, I am so passionate about this rose because I was diagnosed with high cholesterol when I was 28 years old, very young. And in my head, cholesterol was an old man's disease. You get oh. cholesterol when you're old and you're dying or you're old and you're about to check out of this world. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how do you get cholesterol when you're 28? So mm -hmm. for me, understanding the power of changing your habits yeah. is very important yeah. understanding the power of educating people with solid nutrition information is paramount mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. because what i've realized is there's a lot of quack information there's a lot of yeah. quick things that don't sustain people long term and so my goal what I have in my mind is to really reach as many people as possible mm -hmm. in Africa mm -hmm. and teach them about the power of just literally changing your nutrition, mm -hmm. literally moving your bodies more because there's the power of the Western culture that is coming very strongly to this country and into Africa. Um, Africa is a very young continent, mm -hmm. a young, rich, unfortunately we are we we do i don't see like we have the leaders that are understand how powerful africans are mm -hmm. and how powerful we are as a continent mm -hmm. um unfortunately i don't see most of our leaders really get the power of harnessing young people yeah. because a lot of the, this young blood is extremely smart mm -hmm. extremely innovative and if they could pump resources to them, mm -hmm. this country, this continent of ours mm -hmm. would be, com I'm telling you, we could take over the world. Mm -hmm. Like I, I feel that viscerally mm -hmm. in the, on the inside of me, just because number one, I've worked with a lot of young, younger adults. Sure. I mentor them and they're smart, mm -hmm. like ridiculously smart. Mm -hmm. And if we just empower them and just not talk, because there's just so much talk. I've heard talk for my entire, from when I was little. Yeah. And I've seen how people have promised people to do things and nothing's done. Mm -hmm. So we're losing out on, our, on ourselves. That's number one. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, our mindset is, for some people, very selfish. Mm. It's about me and me and me. And I've always said, the minute you realize it's about empowering the community, empower just the people around you, we all grew together. True. We all grew together. True. So I grow, you grow, he grows, she grows. We all grew together. Absolutely. So shifting that mindset, not having it, because that's a scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset of let me grab and keep it all to mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. Share that. You can grab some, keep some to you. I don't care. Right. But give a lot of that to other people who you can see have the potential to move. Mm -hmm. Now, let me bring that back to treasure fitness and um, lifestyle disease and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, when you think about the stats, they show WHO, over half of the population has diabetes in Kenya. Over, over, especially older people. Diabetes is one of those. Lifestyle diseases are rampant. Mm -hmm. And all we need to do is just begin to educate people on simple, I'm telling you, simple tweaks in your lifestyle. It's very simple. I've gone to like an, an local television shows right yes. like even our native language this is what speaking. i was saying about your hustle yes, yeah, yeah because for me it's we need to educate people in the villages yes i'm telling you don't look up and at you want sausages and whatnot those are horrible don't those things are gonna to don't yeah. aspire to it it's actually gonna harm you mm -hmm. i eat in my home we don't need we eat very rarely do we eat those foods mm -hmm. but we really stick to traditional foods and even as i coach clients and a lot of people i don't know what they see but they're like you eat that like, what do you mean you eat that? This is cool. This is what you need to be eating, people. Right. You know, this is like life. These are the life-giving foods. Correct. So it's shifting. There's a mindset mm -hmm. that needs to be shifted mm -hmm. on the foods. Mm -hmm. Our traditional foods, listen, we live in the Garden of Eden. We literally, and I think one day people will be like, I cannot believe in Kenya, we were living this way. Mm -hmm. No people can see. You know, it's, it's almost like when you're, when when you when you grow up in it, when you grow up and you have everything that you need yes. to you it doesn't look like it's much right but we have it we are in the everybody looks at america um, and looks at kenya people in america like my american friends like whoa 
that's what you live you literally have a mango tree in your backyard i'm like hello <laughs> and then they're like they want yeah. that you so literally have an avocado, avocado. <laughs> right 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 you're not paying three dollars for an avocado at whole foods, my goodness yeah. no the avocado literally drops in my backyard <laughs> in the morning i go and i pick up my avocado i literally could go to my grandfather's farm and get a banana yeah. literally from the tree mm-hmm. that is the life i mean we need to see god has literally blessed this country and continent of ours we need to we need to begin to see where there are blessings are literally mm. but we, we just don't see it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. don't yeah. As- let me tell you if i could say one thing do not aspire to eat foods in a package mm-hmm. don't mm-hmm. they've been manufactured they've put in things in there that are not healthy mm-hmm. and that's what's causing all these lifestyle diseases yeah. so this year has been great um this season i've always said look for the good in, even in the darkness correct um, the good in is that people now aware of immunity. People are aware of I gotta mm-hmm. take care of myself. People mm-hmm. are aware I gotta move more. I gotta be out in the sun. Mm-hmm. Simple practices our grandparents used to do, mm-hmm. but somehow we've lost them. We've lost yeah. them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In like this first fast-paced World. urban, yes, yeah, gridlocked, yes, yeah, for sure, yeah, for sure, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so, Coach Rosanne, yes. what programs do you? are you running now mm. like for the audience that may be watching this um i know like the focus was on the transition but obviously yes. i think your passion has come through in this episode mm, and i'd really you. love for people to be able you know to follow you on socials um and to also sign up for any programs that you have oh. yeah so what programs are you currently working on so generally i'll be having uh currently so my program hey sugar mm-hmm. is a Six weeks program. I love the name, by the way. Thank hey you. Sugar. Hey, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> it's a six weeks, six weeks program where I help women, uh, busy women, lose fat without dieting. And I basically give them lifetime principles uh, that are going to help them within those six weeks. I always say, I'll give, give me six weeks. You come in, you do the work because I don't do nothing. I, I've prepared an amazing curriculum for you. Um, where you come in, you do the work. Within that six weeks, you will drop one dress size. So let's say you're size 16. Within those six weeks, you should be a 14. Mm-hmm. If you're a 14, you should be a 12, mm-hmm. right? Because I've always said uh, it's important to track track your results, track how you're doing. And I'm always about fat loss, not about weight loss. And that in itself is another long, long, long thing we should do an- another day. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can join our waiting list okay. uh, so that you can alert you once we're opening up the next program. I know currently, right now as we're recording this, we, our next program is going to be starting October 4th. Mm-hmm. But if you're listening to this and it's after October 4th, sign up. Uh, come, You can come to my Instagram page, Coach Roseanne. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on instagram and just click uh, on that link in the bio and it will take you you can see a, a bunch of uh, the stuff that we do inside of treasure fitness awesome yeah our website is treasurefitness.com okay. okay so you can go in there if you want to learn more and understand who we are go to treasurefitness.com okay. but i'm mostly very active on instagram yeah right yes. so you can come to instagram coach Roseanne. but all other social media handles it's treasure fitness mm-hmm. youtube facebook okay. LinkedIn. Okay. I think I'm Coach Rosanne. Yes, you are Coach Rosanne. I on LinkedIn. So. Okay. I did, I did okay. talk you. Yesterday. You did. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So we'll link up all the resources you've mentioned oh, in the you. show notes for thank sure. Thank you so much. Thank and you. I'm so grateful that you took the time to do this and for sharing your wisdom around, you know, nutrition, health, mindset, movement with everyone out there, and for thank sharing you. your very personal story mm. about, you know, the workings behind building treasure fitness and yes. everything that you've been through in the transition thank you yes yeah. thank you and thank you so much for having me it really was an honor yeah uh actually was glad you asked me questions that were taking me back i was like oh yeah this also happened so, <laughs> so i'm also getting i'm refreshing myself yeah. so thank you for yeah. having me really do yeah. appreciate you thank you thank you all right all right yeah.